Hello, and thank you for joining me. The title of today's video is Bakhmut, the beginning of the end for NATO's Ukrainian army. The Russian victory at Bakhmut constitutes the most momentous of battlefield triumphs that the world has been witness to in many a year. Simultaneously, the defeat of NATO's Ukrainian army at Bakhmut is no ordinary defeat. It is a battlefield calamity unseen since the Second World War. In its planning of its campaign in Ukraine, the Russian High Command designated the city of Bakhmut to be of geostrategic importance because, if captured, Russian forces would not only be able to advance to the western parts of the Donetsk Oblast, but also Russian forces would be able to advance to the oblasts of Dnipropetrovsk and Kharkov. However, what ensued at Bakhmut was a brilliantly conceived and brutally executed meat grinding operation by the Russian High Command, in which some of the finest legions of the Ukrainian army were lured into a killing zone. Indeed, the ensnarement of the Ukrainian army by the Russians at Bakhmut is the greatest military ensnarement that the world has known in recent years. As a result of the Russian victory at Bakhmut and the meat grinding operation that the Russians carried out in the city, over 50,000 Ukrainian soldiers have perished, alongside hundreds upon hundreds of armoured vehicles. Those losses cannot be replaced. No matter how many men the Ukrainian army force into mobilisation, these men are simply incomparable to the elite Ukrainian soldiers which were consumed and devoured by the Russians at Bakhmut. Thus, as a result of the Russian victory at Bakhmut, the beginning of the end of NATO's Ukrainian army has been achieved by the Russians. Not only will the Russian army now advance into the western part of Donetsk Oblast, but from there, the Russian High Command will start planning the advance of Russian forces into the Dnipropetrovsk Oblast and also the Oblast of Kharkov. Now, whilst I am cautious to draw historical comparisons, it is very evident to me that there is a comparison to be drawn between the Battle of Stalingrad and the Battle of Bakhmut. First of all, the German Sixth Army, which was the largest and most powerful field army in the Wehrmacht, should never have attempted to take the city of Stalingrad. At the same time, the Ukrainian army should never have attempted to defend the city of Bakhmut as it did. Undoubtedly, the Ukrainian army should have, should have put up some sort of resistance at Bakhmut, but they should never have ever committed the tens of thousands of its best troops to Bakhmut. Also, whilst the uh, Battle of Stalingrad constituted a turning point for the Allies in the Second World War, I am also of the opinion that the uh, Battle of Bakhmut constitutes a turning point in the war in Ukraine. But I want to issue a caveat to what I have just said, because in my mind, and as I have said in uh, television interviews and television debates since the first day of the commencement of the Russian military campaign in Ukraine, there 
has never been any doubt in my estimation that the Russians would triumph in Ukraine. And as a result, Ukraine would cease to exist as a country. So whilst the Russian victory at Bakhmut does constitute a turning point, nonetheless, the Russian army was always going to win in Ukraine and eventually will triumph in the country. No matter what military equipment NATO sends to Ukraine, this will not alter what will be the eventual outcome of the war in Ukraine. And let us be mindful of how many game changers, according to the Western ruling elites, there have been so far in the war in Ukraine. First of all, the supply by the Americans and the British of anti-tank weapons to the Ukrainian army was categorized by the Western ruling elites as a game changer. Then the supply by the West to the Ukrainian army of HIMARS was again categorized as a game changer for the Ukrainian army. Then it was the supply of German leopard tanks to the Ukrainian army that was categorized by the Western ruling elites as a game changer. Then it was the supply of British Challenger tanks to the Ukrainian army that was categorized as a game changer. Then it was the supply by the British to the Ukrainian army of depleted uranium that was categorized by the Western ruling elites as a game changer. Then it was the supply of British storm cruise missiles to the Ukrainian army that was categorized by the Western ruling elites as a game changer. Now we are hearing from the Western ruling elites that the supply of F-16s to the Ukrainian armed forces will be a game changer. Well, at heart, the Western ruling elites know that they are lying and they know that the Russian army cannot and will not be defeated in Ukraine. The Western ruling elites are firstly making an immense amount of money by exploiting the situation that they and their puppet government in Kiev have placed the population of Ukraine in. And secondly, by supplying endless amounts of military equipment to the Ukrainian army, the Western ruling elites are trying to weaken Russia so as to preserve Western global hegemony. Again, whatever the Western ruling elites send to the Ukrainian armed forces, this will not prevent the inevitable, a victory of the Russian army in Ukraine. So, in concluding, what the world is witness to at Bakhmut is a incredibly planned and ruthlessly executed military operation by the Russian high command. The, in my opinion, best forces of the Ukrainian army were lured into a meat grinder and from there, there was no escape from them. That NATO and the Ukrainian high command fell into a trap by the Russian high command really speaks wonders about the competence of NATO generals and the competence of Ukrainian generals. Following on from the Russian, Russian victory at Bakhmut, this has severely impaired the ability of the Ukrainian armed forces to launch a counteroffensive in the Donbass, in Zaporozhia Oblast, and also in the Oblast of Kherson. Because again, 
their finest legions have been annihilated at Bakhmut. But on top of that, we must be mindful that the defense fortifications that the Russians have constructed in Donbass, in the Donbass, in the Zaborosia Oblast, and in the Kherson Oblast are quite simply impenetrable. Indeed, even the American army would, in my opinion, fail to penetrate the aforementioned Russian defense fortifications. Therefore, the Ukrainian armed forces, no matter what they are equipped with, will not be able to succeed in launching a counteroffensive against Russian forces in the Donbass, in the Zaporozhia Oblast, and also in the Kherson Oblast. And with that, I am willing to draw a histor another historical comparison, this time with the Battle of Kursk in the Second World War. Because the Red Army in 1943 amassed a vast military force around Kursk, a salient. But it was a deadly trap for the Wehrmacht and the Waffen SS. The Russians constructed formidable defense fortifications in the Kursk salient, and they lured the Germans into attacking the Kursk salient. And as a result, the German panzer uh, divisions from the Wehrmacht and the Waffen SS were lured into a killing zone. Indeed, it is known as the death ride of the panzers. After the German attack at Kursk was blunted by the Red Army, the Russians then went on the offensive and began the liberation of, Kar of Oriel, Belgorod, Kharkov, and then Eastern Ukraine, and then eventually by the end of 1943, Kiev. So again, whilst I am hesitant to draw historical comparisons, nonetheless, it is clear to me that if the Ukrainian armed forces do go on a counter offensive against the Russians in the Donbass, in Zaporozhye or in Kherson, or indeed in all three of them, then we can draw a comparison with what will happen to the Ukrainians there with what happened to the Wehrmacht and the Waffen SS at Kursk. So my view remains unchanged. The Russian armed forces have, of course, made mistakes in their campaign in Ukraine. They have suffered setbacks in their campaign in Ukraine, but not major setbacks. Indeed, the Ukrainian armed forces or, the, or NATO's Ukrainian army have not defeated the Russians on the battlefield. What happened last, late last year in Kharkov, in Donetsk Blast, in parts of Kherson, was a tactical retreat by the Russian army. The Russians gave up land because there were not enough Russian soldiers to defend it. So the Ukrainian army simply advanced on empty and, undef and undefended lands. Well, if the Ukrainians now in 2023 attempt to carry out a counter, a counter offensive, as I said moments ago, this offensive will be brutally obliterated by the Russians. Thank you as always for taking the time to listen to my analysis. And I hope you will find the time in the future to watch and listen to another of my videos.